Hey guys, this is Steve from Wolves at the Gate, and you're listening to the Brute. <laughs> it happens every time. It's a tongue twister. Brutally. <laughs> Brutally delicious. Delicious. Yep. Hey guys, this is Steve from Wolves at the Gate, and you're listening to the Brutally Delicious podcast. I'm Bruce. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate your time. Yeah, no problem. I think I saw you guys. Well, not I think I saw you guys back here in Richmond, Virginia. You guys were on the Red Jumpsuit Apparatus Tour a long time ago, right? Yeah. Like uh, five years ago, six years ago, maybe even more. I don't know. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah, I think I saw you. You played the Canal Club here. Oh, cool, cool. So now that you guys are uh, we're coming out of the other side of this, what's it like to finally be seeing the light of day and getting a record out and planning tours and that sort of thing? Uh, yeah, it just it feels normal. So it feels feels good, you know. Um, yeah, it. it we're not like totally out of the woods with all that stuff, but it definitely seems to be getting back to what I guess we once called normal. So, um, yeah, it's exciting. Cause you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's hard when you're doing something you love and you kind of have to just press pause, you know, are you doing anything different to prepare for this, uh, this round of, uh, you know, record releases and touring and that sort of thing, or is it just same old, same old? Uh, what do you mean? Like in anything in particular? Or? I mean, are you are there different precautions you're taking or different? Uh, I don't know, maybe not doing meet and greets or any of that sort of thing. Well, we've never really done meet and greets. Um, you know, we generally just hang out after the show. Um, really, it's just going to come down to uh, the venues and their regulations, you know, because every city is different, too, or every state for that matter. And also, it also depends on you know, if we're not the headliner, the headliner, I think for the most part, they're kind of the ones who generally dictate right. what happens there. So really for us, our preparation is we just want to be able to be flexible um, and uh, yeah, do the best we can to, you know, it, you know, if we are playing shows, we want, we want to give people what they paid for, you know, give right. them the best show we can give them and uh, also get a chance to connect with fans. But also at the same time, we don't want that to be at, at the cost of you know, having to miss right. the next five shows. <laughs> right. So there's a whole different mindset, maybe. Or maybe there's not, but I would think there's a different mindset. Or it's always going to be in the back of your head, right? Yeah, there's a lot more you have to think about. It's a whole other factor. I mean, honestly, you know, whenever I'm on tour, I was always trying as hard as I could to not get sick because you just, it's just hard not to get sick on tour because right. you were, Run yeah, down. just, yeah. And the nature of touring is you're just in public areas all the time. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I always like I washed my hands everywhere I went and tried to be mindful of that. That was pre-COVID. So right. um, I'm not a hypochondriac. I just I need my voice to perform, you know, and right. I I hate the idea of somebody paying to come to one of our shows because it's happened before where I'm just I'm dead, you know, vocally because I'm sick, you know, and uh, I want to be able to give people the show they paid for, you know. How have you kept your vocal cords and your voice in in shape during these years? It's been two years, I guess, almost. Yeah. Years that you haven't been, you know, every night playing. Is there, do you have a regimen you've been keeping up with? Yeah, before any tour, you know, depending on how long our set is, I have like a regimen that I go through to get stamina up and, you know, thankfully, we've been consistently, you know, writing and recording since the pandemic, you know, because we put out a record in 2019. And we had to, you know, we had to cancel a tour because it was literally going to go out right as lockdown happened in 2020. Um, and so we just got to work on we did like a, a reimagined versions of songs off our last record. So I got right away to doing that. And whenever I'm tracking vocals, I'm singing a ton, um, you know, and so doing that. And then right after that, got to working on writing and recording, you know, uh, eulogies, um, which, yeah, again, had me like singing, you know, at least two, three times a week for like an hour or two. Um, so that was one way I kept up vocals for sure. But yeah, I actually I got COVID 
And uh, I remember trying to sing once I felt better. And oh man, that, that my butt was was kicked on that because it really messed with my lungs. And right. um, I had to like build up that st- my stamina again because I was getting tired after singing like five songs. And I was like, this this is not good. Right. <laughs> so, right. Thankfully, I think I'm back to normal, but we'll okay. see. So eulogies, I think, is uh, this Friday, right? It comes yeah. out. Now that it's out, um, and I imagine you said you wrote most of this through the pandemic, is it a, was it a cathartic experience? Like, I imagine most of what we've went through has been, shows up in this record. Is that going to be correct? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think it was the first time, you know, I really sat down to write a record and all I really had was uh, myself. You know, I didn't have a lot of outside experiences to pull from because everybody was having inside experiences. Um, <laughs> right. Um, and, uh, and so it definitely produced something different, but also something really special for me. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to just seeing how, yeah, a lot of the things that I kind of worked through and thought about, um, hopefully there are things that will help other people and encourage them and, uh, you know, give hope. So yeah, that's definitely some, something different because generally I, I, you know, there's always like a couple songs that I'll kind of write coming, you know, just straight from what I'm thinking about, what I'm experiencing on, on each record. But I would say this whole record, maybe minus a song, um, was completely through that, that lens. Is there something, and this may not apply at all, but is there a, a takeaway you want your fans to walk away from after listening to eulogies? Yeah, in a sense, you know, um, there's this idea, you know, a eulogy is something that can be seen as um, something that's really dark and sad, uh, but it also can be something that's really um, beautiful um, and hopeful. And really, for me, when I kind of looked in in the mirror and just thought about a lot of things that I've been through, different like things that I've kind of had to struggle through, um, different aspects of suffering, all those things, you know, I think whenever we're going through suffering, we tend to think of ourselves as the victim. But a lot of times we don't realize is that there's a lot of these things that we bring into our lives. We invite. and a lot, a lot of from what I've seen in my own personal life was things that I kind of invited, kind of like you think the enemy is out there on the outside, but the, re- the reality is the enemy sitting at your dinner table and you're, a lot of times you're looking at it in the mirror and it's yourself. And um, there are a lot of things in me that uh, really needed to die, um, things that were really ugly, um, you know, a lot of pride. Uh, a lot of self-dependence, um, you know, and really, I mean, I, I honestly could go through a long list. A lot of times it doesn't mean much to other people, but, you know, it means a lot to, to me. Um, and uh, I, I hope that people are able to kind of look at, I guess, sort of the things that I cataloged, if they're able to identify with them, is not be afraid of really what you see in the mirror, because a lot of uh, our music revolves around this idea of looking at everything in life through the lens of this grace that's been made available uh through through god um and uh you know i know religion's not a topic that a lot of people like to think about in rock music but the reality is is that um you know it really it touches every aspect of of life of my life and everyone's life whether i guess we want to admit it or not and and uh and so Really, my understanding of God's grace and his love has been probably the most prominent thing that has impacted my my entire life. And and so looking at all of these things that I guess, you know, struggles, uh, trials, suffering, um, they all were working to produce something better in me right. than I could have seen. And so that's why the record's called eulogies is that there are there is sad and grieving in it but there's something beautiful because a lot of times a eulogy is recognizing something that's sad 
and bitter, right. but something that's sweet at the same time. Yeah, I mean, it could be touching as well, right? Uncle Joe or something was the greatest guy in the world or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's great. So I imagine then with your music being so introspective and, and emotional, you must connect with fans on a pretty good basis. What's it like when the song you writ you writ the song you have written in your in your studio or in your bedroom or whatever touches somebody across the world sitting in their living room and in, say India or China? I mean, that's got to be a great big payoff, right? Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, that's the power of music. You know, I've I've seen how that's happened for me. You know, as the uh, I mean, still not it still happens. Um, but being the recipient of hearing music and hearing, I guess, how powerful it can be um, when I see that I, that's kind of what made me want to make music really um, is connecting with feeling like I knew somebody who I'd never met before, or I felt like they knew me better than I even knew myself. You know, a record that did that for me was um, Son, I Loved You at Your Darkest by a band called As Cities Burn. Mm -hmm. And I, I just felt like, uh, the lyricist described a lot of, um, I guess, how I how I was self righteous um, growing up, not really understanding what the gospel was about, thinking that it was about how good I must be and uh, earning God's love and his and his uh, favor, and realizing that I could never earn it, and I was actually a hypocrite um, to say that I was. Um, yeah, a Christian believing in grace, but living as if I've earned it and right. merited, you know, God's love for me. Um, and so, um, yeah, that's definitely impacted me. And it's really cool when people are able to identify, um, with our music in that same way where they can, they recognize the same weaknesses in themselves, but find themselves to be so encouraged by, um, the, you know, the truth of, of grace of you know amidst such failures you know do you ever find yourself when you're writing thinking hey this kid's too vulnerable i can't put this out there what will people think or do you just throw it all in there and hope people get it i think there this is a really interesting question you ask because you know i think there's a form of honesty that people can have that actually is self-serving um like you're trying to like you're almost like bragging about right, look how, at honest, me. how honest you're being, you know, right. or it's for shock value. But I think there's an honesty that um, I think, I think true honesty humbles. Um, but I think false honesty produces false humility, you know? Um, and, and so really, I don't want to say anything in our music that's going to be shocking in the sense of like, oh, I can't believe he said this, but I almost, I want it to be shocking in the sense of like, wow, that's, um, maybe somebody here sees that and goes like, wow, that's, that's like really true about me too. Right. And I've just not ever had words to, to put to it, you know, um, that I've really appreciated when music's done that for me, where it feels like, somebody said something for me that I've never been able to put into words and um, yeah, kind of like un unlocks. It's like a key that unlocks, you know, a lockbox, you know? And the reason I asked that is because, you know, I grew up in the, in the church in the Christian music world. And I know for a fact, I might be a little older than you. So maybe it's changed a little bit, but the religious scene, I'm not going to say Christian scene is very judgmental and very quick to, jump all over you. And I was curious if you were worried about alienating or the flat, does this make sense? Or the, yeah. the flashback that's going to come, that's probably not the word I'm looking for, but you know what I'm saying? That's going to come from putting it out there from that community, not necessarily your fans. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And to be honest, you know, um, <laughs> it's kind of like, uh, uh, how do I even compare this? Uh, to to be honest, I don't care about their opinion because their opinion is 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 exactly that. You know, right. it's just an opinion. Um, there have been people who've had strong opinions about us our whole career. Sure. You know, whether it was whether they were Christians or whether they weren't Christians, and um, you know, I've just come to realize that um, 
you know, I, I don't ever write anything and um, just write it and not think about it. I really, I understand the responsibility I have as an artist, you know, to the people that are listening to us. So I want to be mindful of that. And, and I'm not trying to stir any pots or anything, but at the same time, there's a lot of honest, hard truths that need to be said sometimes too. You know, and some people got upset at us. We, we wrote a song called Stop the Bleeding um, because it was political in nature. And basically the song is just about the fact that I, uh, I really hate that the church has divided itself based on political parties because that's not what we're called to do. Um, right. we're, we're called to, you know, vote however you're going to vote, but uh, your political leanings don't identify you. If you're a Christian, God's word should identify what, how you act and how you live. And there were people that were upset at us for saying that because I was in the song, I was basically, you know, how it, uh, um, you know, Republican, the Republican symbol is an elephant and the right. Democratic symbol is a donkey. I just changed the metaphors to um, a wolf and a vulture because uh, I feel like the, the two political parties, that's actually more, that's more representative of how they are a lot of the time. And, um, and it, upset, it upsets people. And I think it's just because it upsets this idea of how we think things should look. And I'm fine with that because the reality is, um, I think there's a lot of things that you just kind of buy into based on how you're brought up. And, and this, even in like in whatever church domination you grew up in or whatever household that we just buy and we just accept, but never question um, and never test it against what we're claiming to live by. And so, um, yeah, that example applies exactly to what you're saying, um, you know, with your question is, uh, yeah, I, I don't test it based on how people are going to react to it. I test it based off of what's true. Um, and, and to me, that's where, that's where the power is. And, um, yeah, I don't want people to be impact. I, I want people to be impacted by our music and the messaging there. And I'm not going to, I don't want to pander to a crowd. I'm not interested in that. That doesn't make good music either. You know, I think that's I think why. It's you, not, yeah, it's not honest yeah. and it's not organic then. And then it yeah. doesn't, I think it falls flat. You're right. Yeah. Well, and, and honestly, that's why, that's why I guess it's underground music doesn't feel like underground music anymore because of, you know, social media and whatnot. But like, that's why I got into this music because I felt like it wasn't pandering to the crowds. It was just, it was honest, you know, and that's kind of the, the sad thing about Nirvana is that, you know, bands like that, that got huge and they weren't really pandering to the crowds, but they were actually doing exactly what the masses wanted. But, right. you know, it, it unfortunately got commercialized in a way that probably they didn't even want it to be. So. Right. So let's uh, talk peace that starts the war. What a banger tune. Absolutely <laughs> love it. What's been the response to it so far? Has it been pretty good? Yeah, it's been good. You know, um, we always just try to keep adding different elements. I think, we like it when people think they know who our band is um, and then are kind of like, wait, that's you, that, you guys put a guitar solo in there. It's just like, yeah, we, like we like we because we, we like it, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, or some people, uh, you know, th there's always something to say. But I think that people have come to realize that our musical tastes are, are pretty broad and we just like exploring. And so that was just such a fun track to make. And. We love just kind of throwing inhibitions in the wind and just going, hey, do we dig it? Let's go for it. And that's what we, why we love that track so much is um, that was really just us going, yeah, OK, we're not going to repeat the chorus again, you know, the third time guitar solo and let's hit him with this riff and let's we'll say we'll see you later. <laughs> so and this may not apply as well, but do you ever think that it's going to be too outside of your fan base wheelhouse or do you not care? It's just you're going to do it and everybody has to kind of go along obviously obviously we want our fans to enjoy our music but you know my favorite bands are always the bands that um they didn't give me the last record you know again repackaged um there are so many albums that i've listened to that i didn't like the first time and they're now favorites right because i like the idea of being pushed about how, what i think about you know and you know what there's tons of people who are like they just want x and if we don't give that to them, they're upset. That's fine. There's lots of X out there. Go find it, you know. Um, and, you know, if we've had people say, oh, I wish you'd write something more like this band. I'm like, well, go listen to that band, you know. 
Um, there's lots of people who don't want what that band's offering and they want what we're offering. Right. Um, and so, yeah, we just want to find, we just want to keep creating in a way that, you know, is exciting for us too. Um, Cause I'm sure you can imagine, you know, we're on our fifth full length and a bunch of other EPs. We want to be, we want to be just a, as excited about music today as we were when we first started. And that's how we feel. Right. And I imagine it's, you don't want to, I think what you're saying is you don't want to write the same record. You need yeah. To show some kind of growth or improvement or to differentiate from the last record, right? Eulogy yeah. can't, eulogies can't be the record from three ago. Does that make sense? Yeah, exactly. You know, and I kind of love the, I, I love the idea of as we grow, like the, honestly, every record it's, it's they're always it's always exciting for me because it's like man i can't believe like i can't believe we made this this is so cool this is like what i what i've wanted to hear and that's what we make is we make music we want to hear and hopefully our fans trust us by now that you know they like us because they like our instincts you know and and there's a degree to which it's like you gotta give you gotta give the artist the chance to grow and and trust them too you know unless we just totally flip the script and started making you know super cheese ball music but <laughs> probably with the way the music business is now that's probably not the way to go right because everybody's trying no. to just make it yeah yeah what's next for wolves at the gate um yeah like we talked about earlier we're gonna do some touring um you know um really that's that's all that that happens now that the album's getting released you know um we've got some other cool video content that we've been working on um, some that's going to get released, you know, not too far after the records uh, come out. And we've got a lot of other, a lot of other like behind the scenes stuff that we want to get out there to our friend, to our fans, um, especially just because, yeah, because of the way the world's been, we're just trying to find as many ways to connect with people that are in, listening to us and enjoying our music. And so through touring and, you know, lots of other cool content like that, we're going to try and connect with people. Awesome. So again, it comes out this Friday, March 11th. I've only heard the single, but I'm looking forward to the full record. I appreciate what you guys do, and I hope to see you somewhere along the road. Yeah, thanks, man. Thank you so much, my friend. I appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, thank you. Hope that wasn't too bad. We'll see you on the road here somewhere. No, it was great. Thanks. All right, be well.